Uh, the other big news is that Roipers, uh, on which are the Nick Fuentes cocksuckers that have been uh, Nick sucking for years and years at this point, have apparently managed to bully Elon Musk into uh, promising to unban Nick Fuentes by calling him a shabos goy over and over again for years on Zetter. So if this doesn't load, I'll just try to read this. If not, I guess I'm just fucked. I just have to recount from memory. They had two groupers and they just posted pictures and said, I can't believe that Elon Musk is such a hypocrite. He's kept Nick Fuentes banned. Even though I don't think that's the case, I think that he got unbanned at some point and then just immediately like broke TOS again and got banned and then cried about getting banned for the thing that would obviously get you banned. And it's kind of suspic like people are, are discussing what the intention might be because if you don't know, Nick Fuentes was there at January 6th, and of all the prominent people there at January 6th, Nick Fuentes was one of the only people who were not charged in association with anything. He didn't get anything. He he um, complained that a, don a large donation he received got frozen or that he was on the no-fly list for a little while, but he's off the no-fly list. He received no jail time. However... I want to say like a dozen people who were there just to see Fuentes got charged. I even know one guy who um, has, uh, who I think was arrested in conjunction with January 6th and he was like a groper and then fell out because Nick Fuentes basically like disavowed all the Jan 6 people and made fun of them. Because he has this take where it's like, I don't like losers. Um, losers, I don't want to be around losers. Here's that Donald Trump thing where it's like, I don't like losers. I want to be around winners. So he made fun of all the people who got arrested and said, I disavow them. And he got nothing for it, which led a lot of people to suspect that he rolled over on Groypers. Um, but Gas says, you work for Jews at uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk says, while I don't condone all the actions of any one group, I must admit to being openly fellow Semitic and generally try to see the good in all people. Uh, Goya Bean Groyper says, bring Nick Fuentes back to Twitter at Nick J. Fuentes. He's been banned since 2021. What's happened to your promise, big guy? And then there's a Photoshop picture of Nick Fuentes. I think that they've merged him in with the vampire from Twilight to make him look more like a human and less like a uh, a golem made entirely from McDonald's french fries. Uh, Elon says, very well, he will be reinstated, provided he does not violate the law. Let him be crushed by the comments and community notes. It's better to have anti-whatever out in the open than to be rebutted than grow and simmer in the darkness. Elon says, fate loves irony but hates hypocrisy. I cannot claim to be a defender of free speech, but then permanently ban someone who hasn't violated the law, no matter how much I disagree with what they say. Um, this will probably cause us to lose a lot of advertisers. It makes me sad, but it's a principle. It's a principle. Uh, so this happened... Two days after that bill passed the House of Reps, where they were targeting anti-Semitic speech. And if I remember correctly, they were trying to target this in schools. So I don't know if this bill has been misrepresented or if I just interpreted this wrong. But it looked like it was trying to make any kind of like uh, anti-Israel speech on school campuses to be like um criminal or, or something I, I don't know the specifics but it looked like it was specifically a thing for school um but after that passed he oh in which yeah one of the specific examples of anti-semitic speech was to imply that the jews killed christ which was christian doctrine up until like the second vatican council or something i think it was pope john paul who came out and said actually no it was the romans even though the entire point of that parable is that the 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 Philistines, I think it was the Philistines, the Pharisees, sorry, the Pharisees were the ones who said, yeah, no, we'd much rather have Brutus, the, the rapist murderer, go free than this the guy that calls himself the king of the Jews. So really, and then like the Roman guy's like, are you are you really sure that you want this hippie nailed to a cross instead of the rapist murderer? And all the Pharisees are like. Oy vey, how many times do we have to tell you, Goyam? Nail the fucking guy to the cross and let Brutus go. And he was like, okay, I mean, if it's your choice. We kind of like do this as like a theater for you people. Um, I personally wouldn't go with nailing the hippie to the cross and instead uh, letting the, the murderer or rapist go free. But if you, I mean, it's your, it's your fucking, you, the Jewish people, the Pharisees, you're the ones who are granted this choice and you're the one making this choice. So reluctantly, I will do what you ask. 
uh, as is instructed of me by the emperor of Rome, I will do what you say and nail the, the hippie Jew to the cross instead of the murderer rapist. And the Pharisees are like, yes, do it already. Jesus, fuck. Hurry up. Uh, well, they did say that. Say, for Yahweh's sakes, hurry up and kill him. And they did. And then 2,000 years later, the Congress of the United States of America says, that's hate speech. Now, I'm not, listen, I'm not like, I'm not pay, 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 pay. I don't know my Bible as well as pay, pay, pay does. But I am pretty sure that is a fair assessment of the, the Gospels and the crucifixion of Jesus and how the Pharisees played a role in that. Am I correct? Can I, should I do Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ponty's body was a fed. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Okay, let's do a poll. Poll. Did I get the story right? Qu question mark. Yes. Vote one for yes. Vote two for no. Let's see. We'll, we'll do a little. We'll do a little wait. We'll do a little wait and chat. Let's see what the, the poll says. I don't know. I can only. I. Ha I must find comfort in a consensus. That's how I'm going to uh, rationalize this. All right, the votes are coming. Sorry, there's a delay because whenever my stream gets behind, it uh, adds more time from when I say something to when the stream says something. Wouldn't know. I'm white. <laughs> okay, Jesus had to die. It was the whole fucking point of his existence. I mean, but that's not the question. The question is, are the Romans or are the Jews responsible? Because if you don't, I don't know, I feel like I summarized this accurately. Because the, 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 the Jews complained to the Romans and said that Jesus was calling himself the king of the Jews. And they said that that is blasphemy. It's against their rules. So he must be crucified. And then at the same time, they had like the choice of releasing like one criminal a year or something. There was like some weird thing that the uh, the Romans did where they could vote to to uh, let a criminal go. And the only two criminals they had on death row at that point were was a guy who was like an actual like monster, and then Jesus. And Jesus didn't do nothing besides say he was the king of the Jews. So they asked the Jews, "Do you guys want the monster dead or do you want the Jesus dead?" And they all said the Jesus. Um, I'm pretty sure I got it right. Who cares? It's a story. Bro, <laughs> are you, like, retarded? Who cares? It's a story. Apparently, your fucking government does, because they're criminalizing saying this story. They're taking this story and saying that a specific interpretation of this story is now criminal to say, at least on school grounds. Like, that's why, that's why I'm talking about it, because it's now in a fucking bill that is being sent to the Senate to be enacted in law. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not going over the fine details of Hansel and Gretel and be like, wasn't it breadcrumbs or was it confetti? Was it cupcake confetti? What's the real message here? It's... Like, like there's, there's actually a reason why I'm talking about it. Acts 4.10, be it known to all you, to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you as well. So all the people of Israel. And then 1 Thessalonians 2.14-16, to 16, For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God and Jesus Christ, which are in Judea. For you suffered the same things from your own countrymen as they did from the Jews, who killed both the Lord Jesus and his brother. I mean, that's... That's pretty fucking explicit. Um, and drove us out and displeased God and opposed all men by hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles that they may be saved so as to always fill up the measures of their sins. And then finally in Acts 30, 14 to 15, you denied the holy and righteous one as for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the author of life who God raised from the dead to this we are witness. If you, I don't know. Uh, don't say that, though. You'll go to jail. Congress says it's it's wrong. Congress, who are Jewish, who are paid by Jews. By the way, um, there was an article I saw 
And 91, I want to say 91 Republicans voted against this bill to criminalize anti-Semitic speech on campuses or whatever the fuck it was. And all of them have suddenly been dropped from APAC <laughs> as, uh, uh, as sponsored politicians. So for some reason, APAC has decided to withhold millions and millions of dollars of campaign financing for these specific Congress people. Uh, who did not vote for this unconstitutional hate speech bill. Isn't that weird? That's really weird. I don't know why they would do that. Because they're, they're our greatest ally, and they understand democracy and free speech more than any other, any other ally that we have. So strange, chat. Anyways, 52 people said yes, and 27 said no. Uh, so that's the Nick Fuentes update. And there's a second one kind of adjacent where coincidentally the same week, a uh, Latino Zoomer who was a um, American first Hispanic kid that met Nick Fuentes in person. There's a picture of them together even. I don't know if it's in the thread or not. It might be in the first post. But um, he decided to post on Discord. And this is a quote from him. Hi, Latino Zoomer here. July 22 is the day of retribution, the day I will have revenge against all the humanity, which all of you will pay for my suffering. SIS will be turning the turning point of the Latino Zoomer lore. And this was a threat made against um, uh, Turning Point USA's convention. And it was taken as a serious threat. He was charged for making a threat. And he was just sentenced. Um, for five years, I think this is the picture of him actually. And this is the state Western district of Texas saying that he'll be sentenced. And what's really crazy about this is that when he made the threat, the police searched his computer in conjunction with a warrant and they discovered child pornography. So this guy who, uh, when this loads, will be standing next to Nick Fuentes, was also a pedophile who collected child pornography. And for some reason, the government didn't charge him on that. And they only charged him on the, uh, the, the threat of violence. So I don't know what happened with that, why they didn't charge him on the child pornography. A part of me wonders if it was like AI generated and they didn't want to try to open that bag of worms yet or, or what. Um, but for one reason, maybe it was outside the scope of the warrant and they didn't want to have to fight with like getting it into evidence or whatever. Um, but they got him for a five year sentence. Oh wait, no, this isn't him. That is him. It's just not the picture of him with Fuentes, which is what I'm trying to do here. By the way, I, I noticed, um, I talked about this on stream a while ago and I have a thread in the Nick Fuentes board, the Catboy board where um, I went into how easy it was to find, like, open pedophiles on Twitter associated with Nick Fuentes. Like, they would just be called, like, Lollycon Groiper, and they would have, like a, like, a snowflake in their name. And I don't know what the snowflake referenced. I don't know if it was, like, the purity of, like, little girls or some shit. But they would all be, like, openly pro-Lollycon, and they would just, like, openly share pictures of, like, little white girls and say, like, mm, she's almost ready for breeding. I love pregnant lollies. Like, they're just, like, the most vile, disgusting shit you could possibly imagine. And they're all, like, in Nick Fuentes' circle. And then after that thread got made, and I made this big collection of the shit that I could find within seconds of just searching anything related to Nick Fuentes, that's all gone now. And I don't know if, like, X changed its rules on Lollicon. I think it has since then. Or if Nick Fuentes just, like, asked these guys to stop being such open pedophiles on, on Twitter. But I've, I've tried to be fair to Fuentes because, you know, on its face, it's like a, a guy trying to stand his own against the government and and advocate for unpopular positions uh i i can't like hate that um but every time i've tried to look into like what they're up to it's always this really creepy cult of guys who are way way too up the, up nick's ass 
and there is always some skeevy fucking pedophile shit. And, you know, the, after the January 6th stuff where he just, like, disavowed his own supporters who went to jail for him, it's like, I, I, I've i tried to find something to like about this guy. And he's so unlikable. And the only person or only people more unlikable than him are the Groypers, uh, who are, like, completely feral, retarded children who are unable to discuss anything, unable to carry a thought uh, besides how much they want to fuck kids. And it's like, it's it's just so, they're so fucking gross. I'm convinced it, I'm convinced it has to be like some kind of op. And what's, what's really, really um, surprising is that his tweets and tweets about him still get like hundreds or thousands of likes on, on Twitter. And what what's what's he doing? Nick Fuentes is like completely afraid to show his face in public anymore. He doesn't attend any real life events. He does like his annual cope session where he tries to look like Hitler in front of a projector and it just always it's always the most unprofessional shit imaginable. He doesn't um he has cozy, but I don't know anything happening on cozy anymore. Apparently he has his streams that get like a couple thousand viewers and then that's it. And then and then what? I don't see clips of him on social media. Nobody talks about shit that he's doing. But he still has, like, this momentum of, like, all these weirdo faggots stuck up his ass, sucking his dick all the time. I, I, and I, it's just really baffling to me. I really don't understand if it's organic, where it's coming from, you know? Yeah, I, I just don't get it. I talked to a Fuentes fan once. I was a 40-year-old incel. Um, I haven't heard of Cozy in like two years. Yeah, dude, I don't... That's, that's the crazy thing. Like, you know, the forum stays relevant because we constantly have shit going on. I do my streams. We get shared around in like normie circles because of the gender critical shit. Um, I never hear anything about Fuentes, good or bad. Like, I don't even hear about his drama anymore. Like, he had his falling out with Ethan Ralph and um, and a couple other streamers. I think, like, Teddy Feaser turning on him was, like, the last, the last Nick-related anything I've heard. What the fuck is he doing every day? I just don't get it. Trust the instinct because if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. It's... It's true. It's like, yeah, it's like a gut feeling. Like, something's weird, weird. I just don't... I, I just don't see it. And what I do see is so superficial. Because it's, it's just like shit like this. Where you just see, like, these obviously Photoshop pictures of um, Edward Fuentes from Twilight uh, on Twitter getting hundreds of likes. And then Elon Musk replies to it. And it's like, where is this coming from? Like, why? You know, why? <laughs> what the fuck? Um, so I, I, I don't know. People were, were saying it's kind of incidental that this is happening right after the Congress congressional bill moved forward a little bit. And I kind of see that. I kind of see where they're, where they're going with that. Um, like they're trying to con like they're trying to on one hand to pass like an anti-Semitism bill and they either need like more obvious, like anti-Semitism on a major platform to justify it. Like he, like for instance, this is how it would look if it was like a like a false flag thing. Elon Musk, if he was like a part of this, would begrudgingly all of a sudden after years of ignoring Fuentes allow him back on the platform right as this bill is going through the Congress and um, it needs more bipartisan and popular support. So Elon allows, who is the richest man in the world, owns one of the largest social media platforms in existence, Nick Fuentes back onto the platform. And then Nick goes, hello, fellow Groypers, hail Hitler, let's kill those Jews tomorrow. And then that gets put on zitter. And um, then everyone's like, holy shit, Elon Musk allowed this crazy lunatic neo-Nazi openly calling for genocide and, and, uh, uh, and worshipping Hitler on his platform. And day one, 
we need we need to do something. And then Fox News plays it, and then MSNBC plays it, and then CNN plays it, and then suddenly all these people who are like, maybe we shouldn't restrict the constitutional uh, protections that we've that we've been afforded by the Constitution are now like, whoa, wait a second, we're like. 30 seconds from from a neo-Nazi brown shirt up, uprising here in the U.S. We got to do something right now. Uh, like if th- if that's how it plays out, then yeah, I guess it was. A... <laughs> if we end up all in in the the bauxite mines for wrong speech in the next couple of weeks, then yeah, like maybe you're right. Maybe it was a it was a false flag. <laughs> The Jews got me. Um, I think that I'm just buffering right now. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, let's talk about Nick Fuente. Ah! Ah! It's all Jover. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.